Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Um, awesome. Whoa, I see a lot of people here. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's cool. Hey, guys. So what we're going to talk about today is actually pretty cool. It's something I've been wanting to share. Robbie, I looked at when I added this to our, our list of potential content topics, I guess you could say. Um, uh -huh. I added it back in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, uh, I don't remember the month, but it would have what would have been it would have been fall of 2017 because that's when I came up with this thing. So we're talking 18, 19, three years later, I'm finally teaching this, which is really cool. So make sure like Rick and Brian and Robin and Krupan Shakar, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, Deborah, Kristen, Marilyn, Serena, Cindy, Maria, Jan, David, make sure you say hi in the comments. Let us know where you're from. We always like to know that. Um, now, if you have to go, you've seen some people put in, send me your notes. Um, I'm more than happy to send you uh, a PDF that basically just has the, the 10 points we're going to cover today. You're not going to get any of the details or the bonus tip or any of like, you know, kind of the, you know, chicanery. Chicanery? Is that a word? Is that like charcuterie? <laughs> is that, is that, actually, is that food? I don't know. I don't even know what chicanery is. I think I just made up a word. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what was I looking for? Shenanigans, shenanigans and, and, and tomfoolery. <laughs> um, it just makes me think of, I was in a wedding once and, um, my dad was in it too, and a bunch of other guys. And, and the, the wedding planner was like a real, like you talk about straight as an arrow. She was like super straight as an arrow <laughs> and, all throughout the day, like she would come out and be like, now listen up, groomsmen, there will be no tomfoolery or shenanigans today. <laughs> and then, you know, because apparently we're out there, she hadn't know. been around groomsmen. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, and I remember at one point, my dad just my dad had the driest sense of humor. He just he he looks at her and he just goes, I think it would be easier if you just told us what we could do. <laughs> you know, and it was just like, because that's all we were doing. Yeah, like, you know, apparently you've never been around groomsmen. That's pretty much what we do all day. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Eric. So. Um, that's what we're gonna be talking about today is how to go through online courses and get the most from it. Now, the running joke is that every time we do a Facebook live, I get a text like in the first five minutes. Now for weeks, I'm talking like for like four or five straight weeks, I would get a CBD oil text. Today, I got a text from none other than myself, none other than myself. And so if you would like to be a part of our text community, it's just a more intimate way for us to connect with each other. Uh, there's a lot of exclusive content, like other than the occasional reminder, like, hey, we're going live on Facebook. Most of what I'm posting to my text community is uh, is exclusive. It's not stuff. Yesterday, I sent them a voicemail, you know, or a voice message that I, I didn't send out to anybody else. Um most of, you know, the messages are, are different. You know, I'm not posting them on social media. It's just a more intimate way for me to connect. And you can ask anybody. I know Barbara responded last week and talked about this. You can ask anybody who's in our text community. Uh, I read them. Like Robbie will attest to this. Um, he doesn't. I don't have respond. anything to do with them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't respond to the text. Like this is me personally responding um, and all that stuff. So if you'll just send me a text at 260 217 Four six one nine. Robbie will uh, copy and paste that in there. But two six zero two one seven four six one nine. I'd love to interact with you in a more intimate way, not just um, you know like we're doing on social media and email and stuff. Uh, it's just you know I check in you know multiple times a day. It's kind of actually a little bit of an obsession. I hate to admit, but probably not the best use of my time sometimes. <laughs> but hey, it's it's a way for us to connect. And so yeah, it was funny. Like right as we were going live, I get an I get a text from myself saying I'm live right now about this. And I was like, well, the, the trend continues. I always get a text from and I think that'll continue forever. So, um, yeah, yeah. Come, uh, you know, come join that community. So let's talk today about this system that I first use, what I'm sharing today. When we went through product launch formula as a team, this is before Robbie joined, actually, uh, we went back, went through this back in 2017. And I remember it went so well, that as we were going through it, I, I wrote a note in Asana, which is our tech. Okay, who was that? You, you have that's your Google Voice number, isn't it, Robbie? Robbie just sent me a text saying, "Do you, who sent me a text? Is that not you, Robbie? That's You're trying to keep straight. Somebody just texted me and said, "Do you want CBD oil?" <laughs> Lol. Oh man, 
I don't know who I'm so sorry. I don't know who it is. Um that's hilarious. This stinks. I've got a oh, I know who it is now. I know who it is because of the previous text that we I didn't save. I'm not gonna call I'm not gonna call Eric out. Uh, Eric Gale. I'm not going to mention Eric Gale's <laughs> name uh, from Maryland. Uh, I'm not going to mention that Eric Gale, but he uh, he texted me and That's said he wants to oil. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I love Max, but the one thing I wish that I would remember to turn off is texts <laughs> in the middle of Facebook Lives, but I never remember. So again, we went through this back in 2017. We went through product launch formula, and we did what we're sharing today. We did it as a team, and I was like, man, that really worked. Like this was. I mean, I've been through, uh, PLF was probably my 15th, 20th online course. Mm -hmm. It was the first time since 2004 that I got a lot out of it. That I got like a ton out of the course and was like, that was just a great process. And then I thought back and I was like, wait a minute. I followed most of this same stuff back in 2004. I didn't realize it. I didn't have a system. I didn't have anybody teaching me this like we are today. But I was like, wait a minute, I kind of did the same thing back in 2004. Maybe that's why it worked. And so you know, we also did this in 2019, last year. Did. It worked so good when you did it previously, you know, that this year when we went through PLF again as a company mm -hmm. and we did the same exact things that we're teaching today. Same exact process. So we got 10 things that you want to do today. Uh, real quick, speaking of PLF, product launch formula, um, starting tomorrow, actually, uh, let's see, September, yeah, starting tomorrow, Friday, September 11th, yeah. uh, Jeff Walker is doing his product launch masterclass. Robbie will drop a link in, uh, in there, in the chat with, uh, whatever the link is. I think it's super simple. It's like, you know, just whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> it starts tomorrow here. Here's why I wanted to say about this real quick before we get into how to go through a course. And you might apply this to product launch formula if you choose to join Jeff's coaching program. Um, the masterclass itself, like the reason why you need to sign up is the same reason why I signed up. Sign up for his product launch masterclass. Not only will you learn how to do a product launch, which is great. I want you to take screenshots of everything. I want you to go to the concierge page and take a screenshot. I want you, let me see here. What? Do, let, me, let me pull up the thing here. Um, okay, I want you to join his Telegram his telegram channel. If you're not on telegram, you should get on telegram and just see what he does there. I want you to sign up for his, uh, Facebook, uh, messenger bot. Okay. I want you to sign up for his text. I want you to go to that concierge page every day and see what he posts. I want you to follow him on Instagram. This, and, and I want you to read every email that he sends and save them in your swipe file. I want you to study a great marketer. That's why I want you to do this. So Robbie dropped the link there, mammacoimps.com forward slash PLM for product launch masterclass. Go sign up, starts tomorrow, follow what he does. Watch, like study it as a marketer, not as a consumer. Mm -hmm. That's my tip. You got to study marketing. So study what You're he's throwing doing. throwing out bonus tips before we even get to the regular tips. <laughs> I am. Yeah, see, you don't get that if you get the PDF. Again, if you want the PDF though, just to, as a reminder, it's great, you know, to have that reminder, just, you know, type, send me your notes like a bunch of people have, and we'll send you a PDF with uh, the 10 things today. So number one, let's start there. Cause that's a good place to start. I'm still Perfect. laughing at Eric's text message, by the way. <laughs> it, um, number one is go through the course with someone. Now we should, we kind of touched on this last week, last week, you talked about how to implement what you learn. And I, and I shared, there are a few things you need to do before you get to the implementation phase. And one of them is you need to go through courses, go through read books as like part of a book club. When I say mm -hmm. book club, it might be you and a friend. I mean, that was my first book club. The book club that changed my life and got me to doing what I am today uh, was me and a friend of mine. Uh, that was it. It was just a two person book club. But what we do from a mechanic standpoint, I want to share a little bit more detail on what we do there is we will have one person download the videos. So now it's really easy to pause. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, things like streaming, you know, especially if, you know, if somebody has slow internet, you know, like when, when Mark does this, um, you know, he's, <laughs> he's doing the zoom call cause we'll get together on zoom and, and, we, and he'll try to stream the video. And, and then, you know, his, like his, you know, one of his kids is trying to play a game and that's all his internet can handle. Like he's only like three devices. <laughs> and so you download them. Also, if, if for some reason their server crashes, 
right when you're scheduled to do these things. We'll talk about scheduling this in a second. Well, then what are you supposed to do? So download the materials. You can put them in Dropbox or, you know, send them to everybody, put them in Google Drive or whatever. You have the videos right there. And then what we what we do, especially with a course like Product Launch Formula, is we watch it at about 1.2 speed. We, you know, on QuickTime, you can literally go up in <laughs> increments, I think, of point. You may be able to go up as much as one one hundredth of a, like, point one one five. I think you can, five. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, it's very minute. Some video players, you can only go up by, like, tenths, you know? But we'll mm-hmm. go up to 1.2 speed. And I, I do that because Jeff talks really slow. <laughs> I love Jeff, but, man, he I do. drags it out. He and, and teaches I, and well, but he drags it out. And so when you t- put him back at a, a normal human pace, you can actually listen to him. <laughs> yeah, and so we put it at 1.2. And then when I go hang out, like when I see him in person, it's like, oh, wow, I forgot. Because I'm like, where's the... <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, first the 1.2 speed here, bud, you know, no, yeah. but it allows you to get through a little bit faster. You even go one, like some people I watch them at like 1.1 speed. It's only 10% faster, but we find that that there's usually a little bit faster. I even recommend that with my courses, you know, when you're watching, when you go through, you know, no product, no problem or, or something else, one of our other courses, um, I recommend watching it about 1.05 to 1.15 speed. If you go much faster than that, cause I, I definitely talked faster than Jeff. If you go much faster than that, um, it, it, it'll get a little too fast. Like where you can't, you you, you, you need, you, you need the space to keep up with what people are saying. Funny story. You gotta be Jeff, able to though, take notes. Right. I called him out on that at a, at a, at one of his conferences one time and we were in a, in a small, in a mastermind actually in a small group. And I was like, yeah, we actually, we watch your, you know, we, we went through PD, PLF again. We had to watch it 1.2 speed. And he's like, yeah, well, I watched your Facebook live and I had to skip the first 20 minutes. <laughs> you got Talking about all good. your text messages and, like, and everything. Burn, like <laughs> solid burn there. You know, that is just brutal. But anyway, um, when you're going through with people, pause as needed to discuss, you know, if, um, if somebody says something, you know, like if Jeff says something, we'll, we'll just use PLF as like the example of a course we're going through. Um, if Jeff says something, I'm like, guys, guys, stop, pause. And then Mark will pause or Robbie will pause or I'll pause, whatever. I wouldn't say pause if I was the one playing the video, of course. And I'll be like, okay, what he just said there. Remember what we talked about two weeks ago about such and such? What if we did this and blah, 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 blah. And we might talk about that for 10 or 15 minutes. You know, it kind of ties into point number three that we'll talk about in a little bit. But we'll pause as needed and we'll discuss and we'll share, we'll expound upon that. Or like, you know, I might, Jeff might say something. I'm like, man, that made me, that reminds me. Let me see if I can find that in this book. And I'll be like, or, you know, let me in my notes. Uh, do, 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 do. And I'll find, okay, here's what, you know, Robert Cialdini said about such and such principle, blah, 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 blah. And then next thing you know, we'll create a new product. <sighs> you know, and that's <laughs> the thing is you want to focus on the results, which we'll talk about. Uh, the other thing about having, doing a group is you hold each other accountable. You know, if there's homework and you show up for the next week, well, you're not, you're not going to show up without your homework. If the homework is write your script for your first sales video, you're going to write the freaking script because you're in a group. Accountability works and nothing is better than group accountability. Uh, So for us, again, it typically looks like going through it as a team, but I've done it with others as well. The very, I mentioned this, the very first course I ever went through, Eric was, um, and thank you for saying Matt always over delivers. I appreciate that, bud. Uh, we try, we try. The very first online course I ever went through, I went through with th- uh, two other guys. I was going to say three other guys, but three of us total. Um, initially, there were three other guys, but the first guy dropped out after like the first week, so because he was kind of lame. Um, <laughs> and so we went through. I went through with three other guys, and we did this exact process. Now, this was an, a course about online marketing by a guy named Corey Rudell, who he uh, tragically died in a car crash. I don't know, thir- 12, 13 years ago. It was like a year or two after I bought this. No, I mean, yeah, like two, three years after I bought the course, I think. Um, but it was the very first online marketing, online business course I'd ever been through. It actually, I ordered it, paid 99 bucks for it. It got shipped to me like 10 days later. It was DVDs in one of those like cheap plastic containers with like the, oh my, I don't even have an example. There literally are no examples, but you know, it was like almost. They're in museums now. Yeah. It was like a binder almost. <laughs> it held DVDs. 
and the DVDs had this cheap like paper coating on them that had the you know like the course logo, and the, it had like this thin cover on it with like a sheet of paper slipped underneath it, you know, for the uh, for the cover. And and it was it was just kind of funny because I got that and we started watching it, and I remember taking the DVDs and burning. And we'll talk about this later, but I remember burning the DVDs onto my computer, stripping the audio to put them on my mp3 player <laughs> not an ipod but my mp3 player where i kid you not with this thing you could not fast forward you could not go back to the beginning of a of a track without or go you could not fast forward rewind and it did not remember where you were on the track you know and so it was like, if it was great. Cause there'd be like a 37 minute lesson and I, I get 33 minutes and get where I was going. And I'd want to listen to the last four minutes. And I was like, Oh, guys, got to listen to that whole thing again. <laughs> you know? So I would like, I would never forget one time I did. I had like four minutes left on a track and I just had, I just had to sit in the driveway for four minutes to listen to the end. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm not listening to it again. <laughs> you know? So, um, Again, you see, you can do this with anybody. Do it with your team if you have one. Do it with some friends. Do it with other people going through the course. One of the best places to find these groups is a Facebook group, you know, for the course. Just message the group and say, hey, does anybody want to go through the course together? Secondly, so number one, go through it with other people. Secondly, set an agenda for each session. I'm going to give you a sample agenda. Uh, you don't have to copy this, but this is generally what's worked for us is we take about two or three minutes just to catch up, have some fun, you know, especially if it's people that you don't talk to frequently. Like when we do this as a team, a lot of times the first two, three minutes might be like, Hey, I got your Slack message earlier, blah, blah, blah. A lot of times um, it might be, we just jump right in because we just talked that morning. Like we don't need to catch up, you know, we're good. <laughs> um, but give a few minutes, you know, and budget that in your time. Maybe it's five minutes where you're just going to catch up and have some fun. Then you do um, about five to 10 minutes of shares from the last lesson, any progress updates. So let's say that on, let's say uh, you're meeting on Thursday and on Tuesday you met and by the following Tuesday, you're supposed to be done writing your video script. Well, take a minute each to give an update. Guys, I wrote the first, you know, couple pages of my video script. I'm really excited. I'm really struggling with this part though. And you can maybe help each other, you know, um, or maybe you, you think, you know, guys, I was thinking more about what Jeff said about such and such. And I, I had this, I had this revelation, you know, boom, boom, boom. So that's the second part. So now we're, we're about, I don't know, seven to 10 minutes in, you know, maybe a couple minutes more, maybe a couple minutes less. Uh, now the bulk of it is going to be watching the lessons and we'll budget about 30 to 50 minutes for this. Um, it really just depends on how many times we interrupt and, and talk and, you know, strategize based on what we've heard. Uh, Robbie, you know, when we went through it this past time, there would be times where we'd pretty much watch the whole, we'd watch what we intended to watch. And other times where we'd watch one lesson and it was like, we'd a watch about minutes. five minutes and then we'd have a 15 Half minute planning session. session. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I know, I remember one time specifically, we never even finished like a 20 minute lesson. No, that's great. Because as we'll talk about in number three, this isn't about, finishing the course. It's not a race to finish it. It's about taking the action. Um, and then the last five to 10 minutes is, is wrap up. So the last five minutes, you know, 10 minutes or so is uh, typically, okay, what are we going to do? What are our assignments? You know, write the video script. We, we're all, we're all agreeing that we're going to have our first draft of our video script by next Tuesday, right? Yep. Okay. Any last thoughts anybody had? Yeah. I really liked what he said about such and such, or, you know, what was your biggest takeaway um, you know, any, any, what are you going to do in the next week that apply, you know, other than write the video script, is there something else? Yeah. I'm going to, you know, I need to make sure I start posting on Facebook more or whatever, you know, no, I need to reach out to my first three affiliate partners and get, you know, get some affiliates, whatever that might be. You're going to talk about that at the end. And then number three, I just kind of tease this a little bit, but remember your goal is to take action. Your goal is to get results, to take action, not finish the course. One of the things that we found about our top students, I think I mentioned this last week, but we found. I, I think you've talked about this before. Yeah. But it, our it, top it's... students in no product, no problem. Is we noticed we can, we can see when they log in. 
we can see like when people are logging in and, and how long between logins and stuff like that. And what we noticed is the ones who did best. And when I say did best, I mean the ones who got the most, who made the most money within you know six months to a year after starting the course. We're not the ones who finished it the quickest. In fact, they didn't even finish the course. In fact, truth is I've never <laughs> finished product launch formula. I say product launch formula has changed my life. I've never finished it. There are entire like sections of it I've never gone through. In part because some of them were not applicable to where I was in my business when, when we went through it. And in part because we've decided there's some of them we're not even ready for that part yet. We're not, we're not, we're going to do that one, you know, in 2021 or 2022. Mm -hmm. But what we noticed is they would log in a lot the first few days, but then they'd hit a point and they would log in for four days. And then they'd come back and they'd log in, they'd watch like four lessons. And then they wouldn't log in for 11 days. And then they come back and they they log in for 37 minutes. And then they wouldn't log in for three days. And then they 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 come back and they would be logged in for an hour and four minutes. And they wouldn't be logged in for two and a half weeks. And they kept repeating this pattern over and over again. I finally started asking a few of them, why is that? Is it because you, you didn't have time? Life got in the way? No, Matt, we were implementing. I would say something and someone would be like, yeah, I paused in the middle of the video. I remember... Um, I think it was Britt Malka, I think, who said this. He said, I, I didn't even finish the video. I went and executed and I got results. And then I repeated it and I repeated it and I repeated it. I didn't go back to even finish that video for weeks because she was executing on what she learned. So the goal is not to, to finish the course. It's not a race. I finished the course in six weeks. Congratulations. How much money did you make? Or what kind of results did you get? It's, it's like... <laughs> It's like somebody who re I read the I read that weight loss book in two days, and then you look at them six <laughs> weeks later, and you're like, "Did you also eat three cakes?" I mean, you know, I'm not trying to be offensive, <laughs> but it's like you read the book in two days. I haven't even finished the book. I got results you didn't. Like who, who did better? All right, so that's number three. In goal is to take action. The goal is to implement, like we talked about last week, not to finish the course. Number four, create a timetable and stick to it as much as possible. Now, I want to, I want to, I want to <laughs> comment on this, stick to it as much as possible because we just talked about, we had an, we had a timetable for when we were going to go through PF and then we got five minutes into a video and we spent the rest of the thing talk. Why? Because we were, again, we were implementing. So what did we do? We revised the timetable and then we stuck to that as much as possible. And then we revised the, the timetable and we stuck to that as much as possible. The key here really is not about whether or not you actually stick to the timetable, it's more about creating the cat, like set it, put it in your calendar mm -hmm. and stick to it. Treat it like work. You know, if you have a full-time job and they say you need to be there from nine to five 30, you show up at hopefully eight 55 and you leave at about five 35, you know, or five 30. That's what I hope you do. I know <laughs> for me, um, I looked at my calendar this morning and I had three, I had my big three, my big three things to get done. I've done one of them. This is actually not number two. Um, and I've got two more that I'm going to do right after this because they're best done in, they have an involved recording. So I'm going to do them in the studio. I, that really, like, it's not an option. And, and whether or not you show up for your, your meetings um, is, is not an option. It's work. You, you paid for the course. You're going to treat it like work. And so it's like a doctor's appointment, right? Yeah. You don't, you're you're not going to just not show up. You're going to like, you've got the illness, which is why you bought this course. It's the same kind of thing. You had I a like problem that. and you want it fixed. Put it on your calendar like it's an appointment and just go do it. I like that. Keep I like your that. appointment. Um, I know what I found, Robbie, is like, two to three hours, maybe upwards of four a week consistently. Much um, more than that. And it's really more. difficult to keep the yeah. consistency. So what that would look like for, for us is we typically do like Tuesdays and Thursdays. You know, Mondays kind of stink to do learning. Fridays kind of stink. And then you won't, don't want to go back to back days. So, I mean, that by default, that puts you at Tuesday, Thursday. But find a time, find a day and time that works for the group and stick to it. You know, if Monday afternoons work best for the group, fine. Fridays work, you know, go with it two days a week for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes tops um, for the learning part and the discussion part. And then usually about 
an equal amount of time, maybe a little bit more for the homework part. Um, that's what you want to do. So we put it on our calendar. We showed up. You know, if somebody needed to reschedule, again, we treated it like work. Um, outside of the past, you know, couple of weeks where I've been going through post-surgery stuff and, um, you know, and all that stuff. Um, I try if, I mean, if I know I have to reschedule something, I try to let everybody know as far in advance as possible. And so do the same with your stuff. If you know, you've got a doctor's appointment, you know, I would definitely say a doctor's appointment is first of all, harder to schedule and also more important than you're studying, you know, in <laughs> course you're going through. if you've got a doctor's appointment, then reschedule. You know, but let let your let the other people in the group know as far in advance as possible. Try not to reschedule at the last minute. Um, I will just say on this one, there were plenty of times when I really didn't want to show up, but I did because it was on my calendar. I made the commitment. There were other people who were going to be on, and I didn't want to. I showed up sick. I showed up tired. I showed up busy. I knew that by doing this meant that I was going to have to do that other thing because I maybe I planned my day poorly or something came up. And I knew that I was going to have to work that night because I stuck to my commitment. But that there's something about that. And I, and I some of those days ended up being some of the best because I went into them with this attitude of I really don't want to be here, but I guess I've got to do this. And I might as well get the most out of it. And I actually had a better mindset. So fifth, so number four was stick to a timetable as, as much as possible. Put it on that calendar and stick to it. Number five is create a study space. You know, I, I mentioned, I think it's in the past couple of weeks that this is my studio space. I only do with rare exceptions. You know, if I've got like half hour between say podcast interviews, I might just do work in here rather than go back over to the office. But when I'm in this space, I'm either talking to the camera or I'm recording a podcast and that is literally, or I'm taking pictures. That is the only three things I do in here. So when I come into this space, it really is kind of a, it's a sacred space. It's for interviews. It's for Facebook lives. It's for podcasts. Like it's a, it's a sacred space that has a very specific purpose. Yeah. We talked about that on the podcast last week too, on how important it is to put your brain into a certain space you right? talked about and, that too as well yeah and and the impact like it changes how you view everything in front of you so you know when you get into a specific space your brain kicks into gear like okay in this space i do this thing right it's why mm -hmm. you eat at the kitchen table you get hungry when you walk through the kitchen it's the same kind of thing <laughs> is that why, is that why no matter what like even if i just go into the bathroom like I'm, I'm being serious. Like I will go into the back. I will just see something on the bathroom floor. I'm like, Oh my gosh, why did the kids leave a dirty shirt on the bathroom floor? I will pick it up. I'm like, I have to pee. <laughs> I just, I'm sure there's the something there. There's gotta be some sort of psychology to that. Um, like no matter what, if I take the kids to the bathroom, I end up having to go. It does not matter every single time. <laughs> but the thing is you want a dedicated space as much as possible. And so like, if you can get outside of wherever you're normally doing other activities, that's great. Like it could be outside. Um, I haven't done that, but I know that, that that could be a great spot to do it. You know, go outside, sit on the porch, you know, I mean, unless you don't want to associate sitting on the porch with, uh, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, it could even be as something as simple as like, I know I normally stand throughout the day, but when I'm studying and sitting and taking notes, I prefer to sit as, you know, more. I don't know what it is. I, I, I really don't. I don't know what it is, but I prefer to sit. And so I might be in the office, but I'll sit. I know for us, it was at our dining room table. When we went through PLF a few years ago um, and Tara went through with, you know, Mark and I, before Robbie was on board, we went upstairs because it was easier for Tara and I to both be you know, together, it doesn't really work in my office. There's not, there's room, but it's just kind of weird. Um, the setup is just kind of weird. And so <laughs> bring your family to work day. Yeah. You know, um, it could be, it could be anywhere, you know, it could be like, have a specific notebook, you know, this was my 
speaking of Jeff Walker, this was my launch con notebook that I stuck. Cause I've been going through those notes lately. I have other notebooks. I, I literally have different notebooks for like different events, different courses, things like that. Have a specific notebook, have a specific pin, have a specific space, uh, which leads us to number six, eliminate distractions. Okay. Is it, you know, you, you bought this course, you're going to go through it, like treat it like a college course. You know, treat like you're going to study for a college course that costs thousands of dollars because it probably costs thousands of dollars. So close everything else on your computer. When we would do these, the only thing I kept open was Slack because there were times where we would take screenshots and send them to each other so much that I got tired of having to open and close Slack. But I don't have notifications on Slack anyway, so I'm not getting distracted. And if I would go to Slack to send something, I just had to be disciplined. But otherwise, I had everything else closed. Um, lock the door if you can, you know, I don't know who oh, we're talking with, with Gabby this morning. It was like, you yeah. know, I don't care if you lock the kids out or lock the kids in. doesn't matter to me. Just lock, lock the door. Um, silence. You know, your phone has this cool thing. It's got a do not disturb mode. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite mode. And just as a side note, um, I have noticed how much better I sleep. Not only do I put it on D and D, but I turn, um, I turn it on the airplane mode at night. Cause I learned that like when it's, when it's not on airplane mode, like the, the frequency can disrupt your sleep. So I just, as a total here, there's a bonus tip for you. You're not going to get in the PDF, <laughs> which again, if you want the PDF, uh, do like Yash did. Hey, Yash, uh, just type, send me your notes and we'll send you, um, kind of an outline of what we talked about today, just a brief outline. So you can keep this for the future. But again, um, we did it during the, the kids nap time. Uh, cause that's what worked best for Tara. So we couldn't 100% remove distractions. You know, sometimes one of the kids woke up and we had five minutes left and we just had to, you know, manage that kind of goes back to the dedicated space. You know, maybe you don't have a dedicated space. Maybe you live in, a, in an apartment and there's not like a, okay, then, you know, make some sort of a routine out of it. You know, it could be the same spot that you eat breakfast in. That's fine. But that's your, that's your dedicated space. That's your dedicated study space. That's your study chair. That's your study table. You know, if I had to do it in the studio, I would do something to change it up. Like I would, I would sit, not stand. I would turn off, you know, the, the studio lighting and just use the overhead lighting. I, I would do something that just tweaks. I mean, it might even be that I would just literally flip things around and face this way. You know, I mean, something that makes it a little bit different and special. Speaking of all this, number seven is make it fun. Um, one of the things I've been learning is, is that routine can be fun. You know, we, we have a routine that started um, five days ago that when the kids go to bed, we watch The Mandalorian. And it's awesome, by the way, if you have not watched The Mandalorian, it's not just Baby Yoda, who is literally the cutest little thing in the whole world. Um, but it's an amazing show. Um, if you have not watched it, I highly recommend it. And that's kind of been our routine and it's fun. It's something to look forward to. So I know for us, our routine was when we met at three for studying product launch formula, Tara would go to the freezer and grab out two ice cold, like slightly slushy sparkling waters that had been in there for like a half hour. And they just had that little bit of slush and it was a routine that I associated with learning time. So it, 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 it became fun. Like it, it's, it's literally, it's, you know, it's crazy. It's just the psychology. Like I associated learning with the, the good taste of, of that flavored sparkling water. Um, you know, maybe it's a, a special coffee, you know, that every time you're going to, you, you get a special coffee, maybe you literally go and your routine is you're meeting at three. So you leave the house at two 30 and you go get, you know, you go get a, go to Starbucks and get a coffee that you like. Now here's uh, something about that. Okay. You were talking about creating a study space. Mm -hmm. um, really yeah. The, but more than that, like this having fun and, you know, doing things you like, like the smell of coffee, the, the taste and smell yeah. of the sparkling water smell is your number one memory sense. Is it really? Okay. Yeah. The, the, the part of your brain that, um, is linked to your sense of smell is actually physically closest to your nose where all the other ones travel right. for these longer distances. So smell is like, you know, if you 
ever been anywhere there's a certain smell associated with that place <laughs> if you've ever if been you anywhere. Ever, if you were not born during a quarantine and you have ever <laughs> left your house oh uh, but like there's a smell like when i walked through new york city there was a certain smell and every once in a while i'll catch that smell i'm like oh and you but you get you're, you're taken immediately back to that place right but think about that when you're creating your study space if you if, if you have a special copy or something you know mm -hmm. that smell is going to trigger the memory of that learning that's going on and it's going to deepen it and you're, it you're just going to know it more i know some some teachers that i worked with um they would do uh, have like essential oils in their classroom or something only during specific types of lessons um yeah. And then, like, during a test, they would flare that thing up again, and the kids would all be like, oh, and they'd score great because there's just something associated there. I was, you just got me thinking, like, I mean, if you can't do a dedicated space, maybe it's as simple as, you know, creating that space in the sense of maybe it's burning a candle or doing some essential oils. So you're Chewing just going a piece of gum. Yeah, I mean, or, like, you know, you, you it make, doesn't have to be expensive. It could be yeah, super like, simple like that. You make up this what you want. You make up this what you want. I, it's, you know, all your excuses are, all well, the bottom part's covering it up. So all your <laughs> excuses are lies. Like, okay, so put on a scented candle. I don't, we'll just pick a scent. It's, you know, coffee scented candle or vanilla scented candle. And vanilla scented candle means it's learning time. And yeah. it, it creates that space for yourself. So at 250, when you're going to meet at three at 250, you start burning that candle and it gets you in that mode. Um, have a routine beforehand. I know for me, anytime I transition between tasks, uh, like when I go upstairs, grab some water and I come down and now I'm going to do anything that's different than what I was just doing. Unless I'm going on camera, this is the one example because I don't want to be sweating. I'll just, I'll do like 15 or 20 jumping jacks and like 15 or 20 push ups and like 15 or 20 body weight squats and maybe just jog in place for 30 seconds. And, and that's, it's just like a, it only takes me a minute and a half, two minutes to do those things. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm now, I've, I've moved into a different space. I've got, can I get that more energy? Like I'm excited, you know, something simple. Um, also, it means I, you know, I do like 200 push ups a day now, um, <laughs> consistently, which is awesome. You know, Either that or you have stopped drinking happening. water. You're like, I'm not, I can't go upstairs anymore. <laughs> I've done too many push ups today. <laughs> so I was telling you, like, my energy level just been sapped lately because um, I haven't been, I just got clearance yesterday to finally resume. I don't know if I told you that, Robbie. I've got clearance yeah. to finally resume normal life so yeah. I can lift and run and do all that. I mean, I can't physically, like, run very far right now because that sucks. But uh, it's crazy what taking, like, a month off will do. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I don't know. Have a dance. Like, listen to your face. Like, have a song. Have a pre-study a pre song. I used to do this. Um, I used to listen in college when I would study. Um, sorry, that was funny. Um, <laughs> so the five times I ever studied in college now, actually the last like six weeks of a semester, I would study, uh, ferociously because I, uh, I didn't study much the previous, but I had a song Canon and D, you know, by Pachelbel. Um, and I had that song played on a loop. There was like a 12 minute version that played on a loop when I would study. And to this day, there's something about hearing that song and it like, I go into like tunnel vision focus mode. And so I actually have a different thing that I play now. I'm happy. I mean, I'll actually copy it for you guys. Well, I, we've talked about this before. After we got back from uh, Jeff Walker's launch con last year, I made a little button app that you could put on your phone that plays his mute, the music he plays. And it just puts you in that same mode again. Again, that's creating that study space. That's so Robbie's going to drop a link. Fun. Oh, sorry. Robbie's going to drop a link. I just texted it to you, Robbie, because I can't open the Facebook feed oh. right now. And it'll <laughs> drive me nuts. Uh, but it's it's 10 hours of this like two minute instrumental song. This just, just repetitive. And that's my focus music. I just listen to that over and over and over again. Um, but whatever it is, like have a dance party beforehand, do some push ups, do something to get the blood flowing. Go, go outside for 10 minutes. Like if you create that routine, if you make it fun, if you associate, that you're about to do this studying with the fact that you get to go outside and enjoy sunlight for 10 minutes and walk around. If you associate that at 255, right before, or do it as a group, even, I mean, if you know, this, with a group of dudes, this probably doesn't work as well, but like, you know, like, yeah, we're all gonna be like, you know, it's different, but like, 
you know, I don't know. Especially over a video conferencing. It's just not the same. Yeah, you know, especially, and especially when it's like you're listening to girls just want to have fun. You know, like a group of dudes listening to that, you know. Um, have some fun with it. Have some sort of routine. So maybe, that, again, we keep talking about dedicated space. Well, if you can't create a dedicated actual physical space, then your dedicated space is at 255, you listen to this song and you dance. And then at three o'clock, you know, and, and at two fifty, you burn the candle, and at two fifty-five, you do this, and and you and you drink that tea, you know, you drink that special tea, you drink that special coffee, you have that sparkling water, whatever it is, right? All right. So tip number eight, very practical one here. I sort of touched on this earlier, but listen to the lessons first, then study the videos. So what I want you to do, most courses, I know all of our courses offer this. You can download the audio tracks. All it is is the video lesson stripped. And you listen to them passively. So you listen to them when you're driving. You listen to them when you're mowing the lawn. You listen to them when you're gardening or, you know, doing dishes or whatever, right? And you're listening passively. And the the kind of the, I wouldn't say the science behind this, but the the psychology behind this is it's, it's repeated exposure. You know, you're, mm -hmm. when you, when you show up for the lesson, you don't want it to be the very first time you've heard it. You, you um, you hear a couple of things. Maybe there's some stuff you need to research. And what is he talking about there? I got to research that term. And you don't have to do it when you're learning. But it also kind of gives you a baseline understanding. Can I and jump so, in there for a sec? Yeah. Um, one of the things we talked about in uh, school when I was teaching and in college was that most people require three to seven times mm -hmm. hearing the same piece of information before they actually internalize it and it's understand it. Yeah. So it's at least three to seven times. <laughs> and so, but like, like it's you totally said, that, re that there. <laughs> repeated exposure is, um, is really important because by the time you, you get to that seventh time, you finally have an, an understanding where you can actually build on it and then do the things that we talk about later. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, that's why I, I interviewed Seth Godin, uh, a few weeks ago and that, that interview guys will go live. I don't know, sometime in October. And he talked about, I mean, he's listened. Well, as an example, I've got them on here. Secrets of closing the sale. These, I mean, there's seven, nine, nine audios. I've got closes, closes, closes. And then the seven secrets of closing the sale discs. Um, the, the Ziegler company digitized them. I don't know if they, I don't know if they did that publicly or not, I, but I, I know them. So they, but, and I sent them to you, Robbie. Yeah. Thank you, Gavin. Um, I've listened to those no less than 40 times. Z Seth has listened to them hundreds and hundreds of times. And it, I mean, you know, it, go, it goes, you know, it goes in, you know, what Eric said. I mean, you, you, you're able to quickly recall the material it just goes into. But, you know, as far as online courses, a lot of times you don't need to, you know, you don't need to watch them hundreds of times, clearly even even five times you know but listening to them once via audio and then studying the video is super important all right tip number nine hopefully you guys are getting a lot out of this and this is going to help you guys in your next online course uh, if you're looking to for a new online course something that's going to completely transform your life i highly do recommend you follow what jeff is doing jeff walker in his product launch masterclass if you go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash plm for product launch masterclass you can sign up like I said earlier, study everything he's doing. Take screenshots of every page, every email, every telegram message he sends. Um, that's an app, by the way, not like a literal telegram through Western Union. <laughs> Screenshot all of his Facebook. I mean, he's messages. kind of old school with the marketing. Yeah. But. <laughs> uh, screenshot all of his Facebook messages. Uh, do everything you can to study what he is doing as a marketer. Remember, study the marketing. Don't just be a consumer. Um, and then one of the things he'll do, and you know, if, if this doesn't interest you, that's totally fine. Just watch how he does it though. He, he will attempt to sell you his product launch formula course, which where we've been using as an example throughout. I highly recommend it. It's an amazing course. Um, and so one of those things, when you go through that course or any course is number nine here, utilize any of the, if they have live Q and A's. If they have live teachings, utilize those. If they have a private community, take advantage of that. So make use of those things. Show up for all the live Q&As. Ask questions. 
do the exercises. A lot of times they'll, they'll get you on live and they'll do the exercise from the lesson. Mm -hmm. There's no new material, but they'll do the exercise Then spend that time doing it. Cause a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have you submit the work and then you can get feedback on it. You can get literal feedback from the person who did it. Like I know we did this with uh, one of the things in, in no product, no problem. For example, our course is um, we do resources pages. And when you submit your resources page, you can get feedback on it. You don't get feedback on it if you don't show up live. And I'm literally going to go through and give you specific feedback on this page. Well, that's something you only get when you're on live. So show up for all the live Q and A's. Most of the time they will give you an agenda for those live Q and A's. And they'll, they'll say it's, I don't know, it's every Wednesday at 3 PM. Then put it in your calendar immediately. Look, okay, six weeks from now, I've got a, I've got a meeting scheduled. What do I need to do? Reschedule that meeting. I need to show, I need to show up for these. I made this investment. Um, I schedule, reschedule doctor's appointments, you know, unless it's like really critical, you know, or rescheduling is going to push it back, you know, eight weeks and it's super critical that, you know, we've, I've done that because I wanted to be on those live Q and A's. I think it's technically Q's and A's, but anyway, uh, <laughs> private community, you know, these communities, they're a great place to connect with people, ask questions in the community, crowdsource info. Okay. You're not sure what tech to use. Then get in the community and ask who's using like, what, what are you using to, what microphone are you using to start a podcast? Hey, any podcasters, blah, blah, blah. And then crowdsource that. Um, it's also a great place to form relationships. I was going to say, and a lot of times people are at the same level as you and they're having going through the same experience as you. And that has a, a huge impact on your psyche because you want to, you know, help them and you can, you know, build off each other's strengths. Did Eric it, Gale just post something in Morse code? It's, it, he's trying to give you a telegram. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what on earth is that? <laughs> Eric didn't know he was the third host today. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. Um, no, I, I love that, Robbie. And it's like also it's a great place, like I was saying, to form you know good relationships. Whether mm -hmm. it they could be affiliates. I mean, I, I can tell you right now, a lot of affiliates that, that we've had over the years have been from groups, from you know groups within courses. And you think about it. Let's say you invest a thousand, two thousand. Let's say you invest two thousand dollars into a course, but you get one affiliate who sells twenty thousand dollars worth of your product. Pretty good trade, huh? Not Even paying true. him an eight you know eight thousand in commissions. You paid 10,000 to make 20,000. Like sign me up for that program all day long. That's, that's <laughs> called being Warren Buffett. You know, if you start scaling that. Um, and that, that, that's a great community, you know, because you have, you know, you have something in common. You're both going through this course, right? So make sure that you utilize the Q and A's. If there's any live teachings, make sure you show up for those. Set your alerts. If there's a Facebook group and they, uh, and they go live in the Facebook group, Make sure you find out, like, are they going live at specific times? And you put those on your calendar and you show up. If they're not, if it's kind of more sporadic, then make sure you set the alerts to get notified when they show up because that's an awesome time to interact with them. And then 10th, focus on really solidifying the learning and creating action items. And again, we said earlier, the goal is not to complete the course, it's to take action. So, you know, we said this last week, you've got to take action. So as you're going through, as a group, you should be going through as a group. That was number one today. Focus on really like, don't, again, the goal is not to complete the course. So what, part of what that means is don't go to the next lesson. If you're stuck on the previous lesson, do you need to go through it again as a, as a group? Maybe. Do you need to go through it again on your own? Maybe. Do you need to go to the Facebook group and ask questions? Do you need to go to the Q and A and ask questions? Do you need to read through the transcript, because maybe it'll, you know, reading and watching and listening use different parts of the brain. So maybe if you read it, you'll get something different. It'll work that exercise, that different part of the brain, and you'll it'll click with you. Do you need to skip ahead to a bonus where they have case studies of that thing? You know, that was one of the things that we did was like, you know, in, in PLF was Jeff teaches the, you know, the sales video. And I got it. it. It made total sense. Everything. It wasn't like I didn't understand it. But what really clicked with me was when I went to, I skipped ahead to the bonuses and watched the case studies. 
And I watched like three examples of sales videos and I went, got it, got it. So you do whatever you need to do to solidify the learning, to really, you know, gel it and then create those action items. So you look at that and you go, okay, you ask yourself this question. This is the question. As a result of what I've learned, now I'm going to blank. So I'll even ask you that about today. As a result of what I've learned, this is how you should write this sentence at the end of each lesson. As a result of what I've learned, now I am going to blank. What is the blank? As a result of what I've learned today, now I am going to... The, the thing is that the next thing might be to learn more. Now I am going to watch the case study videos and watch examples of this, of a sales video. And then after you watch those, now as a result of what I've learned, I am going to write my rough draft of my, you know, my sales. Now as a result of writing this rough draft, I am going to record it. I'm not going to have B-roll and I'm not going to try to make it super fancy. I'm just going to record it. In fact, I haven't even shared this, but I'll just quickly share that process. Now I'm going to do that another time. I'm going to do that. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the quick version, actually. So how we how we write scripts. So like I will write the script on yellow legal pads. I've actually got a stack of scripts over there. In fact, here, this is one of them. <laughs> I know which one this is because I used it as an example. This is the first video for our no product, no problem workshop. Um, this is the very first PLC video, pre-launch content video. Uh, that's just the script. I write that out. Then I read it out, just me, and I, you know, make some changes, blah, blah, blah. Then I read it out on camera, but occasionally talk through some stuff. And then we get that transcribed and into a, a written doc. We clean up the written doc. Then I record it. I read through it again, but using a teleprompter this time. And I'm looking for those things. Where do I need? Sometimes in a teleprompter, you need some spacing. You need things in all caps that you wouldn't, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then we redo it. And then eventually we actually put it on, you know, onto camera um, and do the real, uh, the final take. So just as a side note, but it's, I'm always asking myself that question as a result of what I've learned today. Now I am going to blank. Now one bonus tip. This is important when you're going through courses. A lot of courses, they'll have an intro lesson to the module. Typically what that lesson says, it'll be a four or five minute intro to an hour long module. And that five minutes is basically saying, here's what you're, here's what you learned in the last lesson. Here's what you're about to learn in this lesson. I recommend not watching those in the group, watch those independently. So part of your homework is always going to be before we watch this lesson together, we're going to watch the introduction video. So again, going back to routines, maybe your routine is that you look to see how long that introductory video is and it's five minutes long. So at 2.45, you're going to light the candle. You know, you're going to go get set up in your space if you have one or whatever. You're going to create your space. You're going to, you know, by, by lighting the candle, you're going to get that sparkling water. You're going to get that coffee. You're going to do whatever. At 2.50, you're going to do your dance. You're going to do your push-ups, your jumping jacks. You're going to play that song that gets you into the mindset. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's Eye of the Tiger. If you're corny, you know, I don't know. Actually, there's, <laughs> uh, and it's funny. There is scientific evidence that proves that you perform better listening to Eye of the Tiger. There, uh, Zig Ziglar talks about that. Now, I guess that was back in the 90s. You know, maybe it's not true anymore, but there was scientific evidence at one point that showed that you actually perform better athletically and all kinds of stuff listening to Eye of the Tiger. But you're going to listen to your song. And then at 2.54, you're going to start that introductory video and you're going to watch that going into your group meeting. So maybe that's your routine. So again, just like John did, hey, John, and so many others have. And I want to answer your question in just a second, Eric. Um, if you want to get the notes for this, if a recap handy guide for future courses you go through, just type, send me your notes. And we'll, we'll DM that to you or however that works, PM it to you. Make sure you sign up for Jeff Walker's masterclass, his product launch masterclass. It starts tomorrow. The link is mattmcwilliams.com forward slash PLM. And you can watch him. And Eric asks, 
do you have a teleprompter app you like? And I do. It is my favorite teleprompter app. And it is called teleprompter. <laughs> but I'm going to show it to you so you can see which one because it's actually called something different in the app store. I don't know if you can see that if it's showing up. In not between Bonjuro and Slack there. Yeah, kind of not showing up super well. It is a it's a black square, Eric, with a red camera. And then I love it because you know I'm on Mac, so I can type the scripts on here, copy and paste them onto the phone. Um, what it does is actually when it plays, let's just pick one. This is a test one. Um, let's see here. Cancel. Change that setting because it keeps is the one thing that is annoying me on that. There we go. Okay. Oops. I just made it do the other. Okay, there we go. So I'll click on start. It has a countdown timer. I don't know if that's showing up maybe a little bit. Five, four, three, two, one. Yep. And then the one thing, this is it's doing it differently here. It's not doing it like it normally does. Something has changed. It's keeping this on the screen, which is not normal. But let me see if I can get it to do right here. Oh, I'm not going to rate you very well right now, but I do love this app. Um, there we go. Yeah, it's not working like it normally does. That's strange. Um, well, anyway, it's a great app that is apparently acting ridiculous right now. Um, <laughs> oh, it's because it updated. I've got to go back and change all my settings. That's what it is. But one of the things I love about this is that you can tell how far over it should be. I put it over about halfway because otherwise there'll be words going all the way across. And so I'll drag that over to there. You can change the font size, you know, the speed, all that stuff, the length of the countdown timer. Um, you know, so I typically go five to seven seconds, all that fun stuff. You can change the, you know, what am I recording in? So do you want to do 1080 or 4k? Um, all that fun stuff there. You can do all that. And then I like it because when I play it, it's like I said, the text is only right there. So I'm pretty much looking directly into the camera. So again, for like our high end videos, I would never use, you know, that app. Um, but if I'm just coming over to shoot a quick video and I still need, you know, some sort of, um, I know a lot of times, like I need to script the, I need to script the very beginning and like, you know, like the first 30 seconds just to get me going. And then all I need are bullet points. You know, today, a lot of times we, I mean, Robbie, you know, this. a lot of times we'll script the first minute or two of the Facebook lives mm -hmm. today. I did. You can probably, if you go watch, you can probably tell the difference, you know, cause I'm like immediately into squirrel brain 45 seconds in, but <laughs> usually I want to script that first minute or two just to, to capture them. So, um, that was weird. Did something just happen with be live? I don't know. Um, it's still going. So, okay. Uh, I just saw a countdown on my screen all of a sudden. So shoot me a text to 260 217 4619. Then just make sure you save my contact into your phone so I can send you stuff, um, you know, inspirational messages and occasional good tips. And every now and again, a reminder of something cool we have coming up. But most <laughs> of the content, probably nine out of 10 things we send on there, those of you who are on know this, uh, it's unique. Like the other day, I sent, I sent this out to the, to the text community. I was at a, I was at a, a, a place called Ivanhoe's in Upland, Indiana. We just drove down as a family. And I said, ever wonder what a hundred different flavors, a hundred different ice cream flavors looks like. I'm standing in line for nearly an hour at a place called Ivanhoe's in Upland, Indiana. It's legendary. Why? Because they have a hundred flavors. That's it. Something that makes them stand out in a world full of Dairy Queens. What makes you stand out? And what flavor should I get? Um, <laughs> just things like that, you know, things that make you think things that'll hopefully help you in your business. So again, text me and, um, we'll do that. Robbie, any last words as we wrap up and good to see you, uh, on the country code. Uh, what is the country code here in the U S one? I think it's one. Yeah. I don't know if this <laughs> works outside of the U S Yash. I'm sorry. I'm pretty yeah, sure I'm it doesn't. Sure. Um, almost positive. It doesn't. Sorry. So um uh, Rizwan, thank you for the kind words. And uh same Eric, yes. Yep, thank you. <laughs> so um any any uh last words, Robbie, as we wrap up here? No, just get out there and do it. Like yep. find find a course that you know is going to help you move your business forward. 
and just take action. <laughs> Sorry, just saw the spam comment come in. <laughs> oh, I get amused. All right, guys. Well, awesome stuff. We'll wrap up. And again, take these, uh, put them into use when you go through your next online course. And hopefully it's one of ours or, or Jeff Walker's or something else. But, you know, hopefully these work. Uh, apply them. Let us know how it works for you. And if you ha if you come up with something, you're like, I discovered that it's, you know, like, you know, I don't know. Maybe you have, I mean, seriously, again, this is all about environment. Maybe you, maybe you wear a, sp a specific shirt, you know, or a hat when it's lesson time. I don't know. You know, something like that. But let us know what's working for you. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.